So as we all know that recently OpenAI came up with new models and new API endpoints and whole dev conference was very exciting. Uh, it's all there in the YouTube. So these are the few things, GPT-4 Turbo with 128 context, lower prices, DALI 3, GPT-4 Turbo with vision. This is something which I really like. So what does this endpoint do? GPT-4 Turbo can accept images as inputs in the chat completions API. So it takes an input and then you can analyze or generate captions, reading real world images in details, reading the documents. So this opens us with a huge amount of use cases. And it was very much kind of impressive because I never thought that this model can be so powerful. I will show you why I really felt like, and that's the use case for today. So let me go back with you the app and show you what I have built. It's a scientific image analyst. It's personally for me at this moment because uh, I'm working on this field, but that's something super impressive that it can even analyze the scientific images. It may not be at accurate, but it does it. Main things out here, one of them is the prompt, which I used. We will come into details. And the other part is the GPT-4 vision preview the model, the chat completion, and also it can stream the whole stuff. Made screenshots of two scientific images. One of them is the organization of photosystem 1 antenna in vascular plants, green plants, and diatoms. These are the three uh, different organisms. So plants, green algae, and diatoms. That's one of the screenshots which I took. Other is from this uh, nature cancer, and it's kind of a protein, uh, protein structure, I would say, kind of heterodimer. Uh, this is also flow cytometry results. It's not written in this image, by the way. It's written in this uh, particular label, right? I won't send that to the API. I will just send this particular screenshot of the image. So I'll just upload it and I will see how it works. So first this plant uh, images. As you can see in this image, there is nowhere written what are this. All it is is the structure. Yes, the short forms are written. Let's see if the API can describe this image well or not. I'm not even adding any details. All I'm doing at the back end is a prompt. That's it, right? And I hit the analyze the image. You analyze it, it starts to grab the whole content out of it. It's coming up with diagram of photosystem one complex. So it understood it's a photosystem one complex and it's associated light harvesting complexes in plants. And it depicts photosystem one complex, which is crucial for the light dependent reaction system in plant, algae and cyanobacteria. It's giving us some relevancy out there. PS1 code, what is it about? The LHC and LHC2, which we see out here, LHC2s, and also the different proteins, the labels one, which we see out here, okay? All of this are coming up just via this particular image. It's not to be completely factually correct or scientifically correct, but it makes sense. So we'll just try with another image, right? Let's come to this completed image also out here. So I will just upload that and now, if I just, I have not adding any context yet, so I'm not giving any support to it. I'll just analyze the image, okay? And if you see, it's analyzing, it will be streaming the response as well. Streaming the response here. And the image appears to be a composite figure from a scientific study with panel level ABC, so it can read each of this part, providing a different types of information related to immunology, cell biology, and biochemistry. It's a bit generalized one, but trust me, it can go much more deeper if you really give the prompt to go deeper into it. So the panel A, it's a ribbon diagram of protein structure. I can even understand what of the, what the labels are out there. The panel B is a histogram of flow cytometry analysis. So it could realize that it's a flow cytometry analysis. That's what it was written in this label as well. It's a flow cytometry analysis, flow cytometry histogram. Well, it was not that accurate, but it really realized what it is. It was flow cytometry dot plots showing the expression level. So even it understands what this particular image is trying to express from it. Like it was a flow cytometry dot plot showing the expression level of active ITGB2. I don't know what is that, but it could realize that. So the main part is now how we can build our own, how we can adapt this particular app. So right now, this is working according to my wish. Like I want to analyze scientific image. You can make it to anything and make it for customer services where you just upload a photo and it analyze the whole uh, the customer received something that also works very well. Or you can think of uh, captioning a particular uh, image you send it and it captions it. All these things you can do it very easily using this GPT-4 vision preview it using this particular endpoints. So we'll just build this whole app. There is not much of code. It's more about uh, streamlit view codes here and there. It, the link of this app will also be out in GitHub or in my blog post, which will be released in one or two days from now onwards. And it is up to your own. So let's write the codes now together. Time to build the app. So I have already commented the 
all the code out here. So we'll just go step by step and understand what's happening under the hood to build the scientific image analyst. First, you need to import the modules, right? So the modules which you need is Streamlit and data button because we were building the whole stuff in data button you can deploy in no time and one of the packages which you need to install is the open ai that's it that's the only package and then we need a particular function to encode the image so whatever image which you upload out here it's required there we're encoding it that's all and getting the value out of it and then the page config which is a typical streamlit uh, way of uh, saying it this st page config and the st title which is giving us this particular uh, title out there the next part is we need our API key in data button. You can store it using this configure. I'm not going there. There are a lot of videos where I already showed how to uh, do that. So you just need to store it as a secret or if you want, you can hard code it, but I don't suggest that. So that's how you store the secret and you fetch it using data button dot secrets dot get and you fetch the name by which you store it. So the next part is initializing the client. Okay. So uh, I just want to make a note out here as well that most of the chat completion and all these APIs endpoints have changed now a bit. So a lot of the OpenAI has released a, a new API endpoints where it's not typically behaving like that. I will also cover in other uh, videos as well. It's not like chat.create. It's now literally using a different endpoints. We'll come to that. The module has changed a bit. So first we initialize our client. It's client OpenAI and we pass the API key which we assigned here. Next part is we allow itself to upload a, for our end users to upload a particular file. So we allow the file uploader and what we allow the JPG, the PNG and JP, JPEG, all this type we allow upload an image. Basically now if I run this part, I run via this, if I run this part, you see out here, I always get the option to drag and drop or something. The next part is if there is an image is uploaded, as you can see, uh, we just create an expander and we show the image out here using st.image. Uh, I will try all of them once we uh, kind of have the GPT-4 running. So that's, I think that's the time when it will be easy to test the app and also kind of wrap it up. The next part is a uh, toggle to add more details to the app. Uh, it's not necessary, but you really want to kind of pinpoint what's happening and aid the model with extra comments. All we're doing is this particular toggle. It will add more text. So let me run this part and you will see if I uh, do this toggle, there'll be add text. So this particular text, whatever will be there is kind of added to the prompt. Our prompt is here. So if you see the prompt is getting added with additional details, it's basically appending the additional context with the prompt. As a result, we're kind of creating a more powerful prompt like we do in RAG, but this is not at all related to that, but we're just adding extra context to it. Just helps the model and you get the end users uh, way of uh, kind of analyzing this data. You can just say that uh, this data is about a particular protein or this data is about a particular uh, shopping details so that you kind of give a extra context to your model. This, trust me, is super useful when you try with ChatGPT or any other uh, language models. The prompt, we will come to that just we quickly do this particular few lines of code as well. So then there is an analyze button as well. So if user press the analyze button, then this particular output will come. I'll just come in this part. If I run now, the analyze button is there. So what happens if there's analyze button is pressed? If you see this, if the analyze button is pressed, we first encode the image. This encode the image is coming from this particular code, which we function to encode the image. That's what is used. And then we use the prompt and then we finally pass it to our model here. So let me now actually just uncomment this whole code. Okay. So let me show you one by one. So if there's upload file, and there's API key and the analyze button is pressed, the encoding will happen and then the prompt is taken. So we could have actually passed the prompt before as well, but it's all good. So what's the prompt about? This is important. Okay. So the prompt is written very uh, kind of concise way, one after other so that the model understands if you're doing for any other projects, make sure the prompt is good enough. So you are a highly knowledgeable scientific image analysis expert. Your task is to examine the following image in detail provide a comprehensive, factual, scientifically accurate explanation of what the image depicts. Now the next part, why you see this, uh, this particular output in such a well formatted way, it's because 
highlight the key elements and significance, present your analysis in a clear well structure, markdown format. That's what helping to you know give our response in a very markdown format. If applicable, relevant study, technology, all these extra things are added out here. And also create a detailed image caption. So all these things are added to the model that this is how the instructions are. This is why it's very useful to have a good prompt and how the prompt can be added with more additional context. This is where this particular space comes into play. If you have more additional context, the prompt will take into that account as well. Now, you have to pass this prompt somewhere, also the image, right? You have to create that particular formatted way of passing this to the GPT-4 Turbo with Vision API. So this is where I create this kind of, uh, you can say like a list of dictionaries, you would say. There's a role, which is a user. The content is type text and it's a prompt text, which I'm passing here. The type will be an image URL. So that's why we encoded that, this part, the base 64 image, we are passing it. And that's all. That's the whole stuff, we'll pass it. Now, there are two ways, okay? So I'll just show you how does it varies a lot. First, try with without stream, okay? Let's try without stream and let's see if it works or not. So this, for without stream, it's very straightforward. Uh, that's why I think it's, it's easier to get it. I'll just quickly show you the code here. It's client.chat dot completion this is the new api endpoints okay dot create and it takes the argument as model gpt4 vision preview the messages which we just created here instead of writing the whole stuff here we just created beforehand the maximum tokens it can just increase the tokens also it doesn't matter uh and the stream is true okay but it won't stream here until unless we uh, kind of showcase in our streamlit app uh, but let me quickly show you how this is and why this is a bit slower okay i'll just upload an image image here and i say analyze the context you will see it just goes goes on analyzing the context and it will only dump the whole output when the response a whole response is generated which is not a good user feeling uh, when you are trying to get that for your end user that's why the streaming is super important the analysis comes here you see all the prompts are taken into account right but now we really want it to give us a response with a streaming impact that what makes the product better so for that we need this particular few lines of code stream the response this part and here as usual we do in uh, streamlit with other uh, api endpoints with the chat condition endpoints we did the same thing please go to those videos you will see it's the exact same thing create a placeholder here the full response we initialize it as an empty string and then we loop over it and whenever there is a, a kind of a response coming out, we're dumping it, we're adding it to it, our message placeholder with an extra kind of a gap or extra uh, chat GPT-like uh, particular bar which we are adding out here. It's very straightforward and we're dumping the full response. If it works, great, or it gives an exception. That's all. That's all this whole app is about. And that's why I was saying this app to build is not difficult at all but the charm lies in this particular endpoints, the GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. So let's try with a new image, okay? Uh, I have this image, which is kind of a confocal image, if I'm not wrong, but let's ask the model if it really could understand it or not. So I'll just upload it here, drag and drop, and here we have the whole images. I really have zero idea what it's about. Let's see what it says, but I know a few things out here, like the green frozen protein, EGFP, probably, let's see. How it works we're not adding any context to it but you can actually add your uh, particular model with extra context as we mentioned before and we'll just hit the analyze button now let's see if it streams or not because for streaming we don't need to wait that much we'll see that oh look at look at it it's pretty cool right it's streaming the whole output here and it's creating for us how we instructed the markdown format and it's bolding the stuff which is necessary this is super powerful and also the image caption you see it's in bold as we mentioned in our prompt right there in the prompt we mentioned that create a detailed image caption in bold it does that as well so what's the image about fluorescence microscopy image showing subcellular localization of it knows subcellular localization of egfp me f2 cgfp all this thing in individual says it could read each and every context of it the image provides a composite fluorescence microscopy uh, images which are commonly used in cellular biology it gives a general understanding about it because that's what i asked in the prompt and then it creates 
what is it about tapi about what is gfp what is merge how it is done uh, it actually explains and understands the image first and then gives us what it thinks about it this is super cool right and that's why i feel uh, gpt turbo with vision can be a game changer for your own product uh, this is just a, a demo but it can be actually extended in a full fledged app and which can be super powerful and i would really recommend that you know it's better to go through this whole code and maybe you can extend it to something bigger to it whole code base and the whole details about it with all the links will be in the description box and soon the blog post will be out and i hope this will be super useful for all of you until then cheers